Hi friends, today I'm solving the grasshopper summation kata and it's it's an easy 8q kata. So let's get to it. First of all, as always, I am creating, I'm writing my tests, right? So I'm going to expand the test section and of course I'm going to delete everything, yeah, as always. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I'm importing chai assertion library, right? It will help me uh, a little bit with my assertions. I'm used to chai, so I, I would like to use it uh, in Code Wars too. And I'm only importing the expect state statement from the chai library. Right, I have describe available to me, and I'm describing my function name, which is summation, right, and finishing the callback function. Uh, I am going to have two tests. Uh, let me check out how many tests do I have. I have two tests available, yeah. So summation 2 should be 3 and summation 8 should be 36. So let's write those two tests. So it should, it actually works bit and equal uh, 2, right? And let's write a callback. Inside here, I am immediately going to write my expect statement. I'm expecting summation bit argument two to be equal to let me let me check. Uh, it should be three, I think. Yep, one plus two is three. <laughs> not not that hard. Also. It should work with n equal 8, right? And this time I'm expecting summation uh, of 8 to be equal, and let me check. 36, right? So it should be 36. Uh, yeah, that's it. Test driven development. All my tests are already pre written. That's, that's very nice. So I have, have written my two tests. And let's move to the main section, to the solution section. And before I do anything, I'll try to run the example, see if everything is if the tests are like doing what I expect them to do, right? Looks good. Let's move to the solution section. Uh, again, deleting everything uh, since I, I'll be using the ES6 syntax, so that, that wouldn't work like anyway. Uh, const summation, that's the name of the function, uh, it has one parameter so I can omit the parenthesis right and let's solve it let's solve it in a couple of different ways first of all I'm going to solve it in this like very very you know uh, textbook book type of way very beginner friendly way so first of all I am creating a variable which is my sum it's gonna be like a, my, my result. Then I'm creating a for loop, right? And in the first statement of the for loop, I am creating a variable i, which I'm setting to zero. As always, i is less than n, and i is going to be increased by one every single time. Uh, I think there is a problem a small problem with this for statement and the problem is since 
this n has to be included. Uh, so I have to either write equal right here, or I have to start with n init as, as initial sum, right? Because it's always going to be, uh, this n is always going to be included. So I have to either start with it, or I have to include an equal sign right here. What I am going to do this time, I am going to start with zero still, and I'm going to include the equal sign right here, right? Then I am, uh, my sum is going to be increased by uh, this i, right, this i variable, and that's how you do it. Uh, this is like, hopefully you know the syntax, if you don't, it's, it's the same thing as sum plus i but there is a shorthand, so I'm using this shorthand. Finally, return sum, right? Let's see how, how I have, uh, if, if I have made like any mistakes. Nope, looks like it's all good. So it, it should work. Let me try to do it with more like official tests. Yep, looks like all 105 tests have passed. Uh, still, that 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 might look okay, reasonable. Uh, there is, there are opportunities to solve this uh, kata in a different way, and I'm going to delete everything what I have written. I'm going to try it in a different way. Uh, this time, more more hacky way. Okay, or maybe not more hacky, more like. Uh, functional functional way okay so again starting with summation starting uh, this time I'm starting with an array there I'm going to spread a new created array uh, with n elements a uh, funny fact, you cannot really actually, you cannot just, you know, start with with this, uh, like, and then do, like, reduce like that. That won't work. Uh, a cheat or, like, a, a good way to, to, like, make it a real array is either spread it or use array from. Okay, that, those are, like, two options. I'm I'm using the spread operator and I'm spreading all the elements, uh, all the array elements inside this like real array this time. Yeah, so I have uh, array elements. They are uh, like completely empty. I don't care about them like at all. I only care about my reduce uh, function, uh, reduce callback uh, parameters. And I have, I have several of those, I have four of those, but I'm only going to use three. I'm naming the first one R for like result, the second one V for value, and third one I for index. Okay. I am returning my result plus I. Okay, I'm not using the V, uh, v variable, so I don't, don't, don't need it. It's, it's going to be like, I think, undefined or something like that. Finally, I'm not starting from uh, like just uh, any value. I'm starting from my n from the n since it has to be like included in, in the calculations. And that's it. That's it's really short solution, right? Just create an array and reduce it to, to be a single number. Let's see if that works. Yep, all good. Let's try to do it with the official test. All right, very good. I have have done it in, in a more functional way. Or also, I have saved some key like uh, uh, keystrokes. Right. Uh, I'm not going to stop right now. I'm going to solve it yet again. <laughs> Using one more of uh, one more way and this time this time you'll see that it's gonna be like super easy I'm going to solve it using recursion 
And this is a good, good starting point if you don't uh, use recursion at all in your uh, like learning. So this is going to be like really good uh, example of it. Like, cause, because everybody's just using that Fibonacci sequence for, for recursions and pe people don't know how to apply it like in any other case, just if, if there's Fibonacci then I, I use recursion, otherwise I don't know what recursion is. So uh, let's try to make it, uh, make it in a recursion, uh, let's try to make a recursion uh, with this function. So first of all, I have to have to know that uh, I am going to start from n. I'm going to sum all the all the numbers backwards. Just finally, I'm going to stop at zero, right? So then the zero, then I get zero. I know that zero is like false value, so I can do something like that. So that's gonna be the uh, true section and that's gonna be uh, it's probably a stupid way to comment it nope. it's also not good uh, anyway that's that's like I'll delete these comments that's gonna be a true section that's gonna be a false section right uh, notice that uh, don't forget the, the column. So in the true section, I'm going to call the function and I'm going to add it to the n itself. Okay, so n plus summation, but here I, I am not calling the summation with the n itself, I'm calling with n minus 1. Since my like iteration, I should decrease it one by one. If it would be like uh, 10, then 7, then 5, that would be minus 2. And uh, if it's like 10, 7, uh, 4, then it's like minus 3. So n minus 1, right? That's the true section. What will happen is this, this will return some kind of like uh, number, okay? Some number. Probably it should, should actually return that the function that the result for everything and like until for n minus one right as as this will return the correct result for n this will return the correct result for n minus one the difference between those two is just n so i am adding n to that right uh then then do i stop then, then is that, you know, breaking point, right? The zero I have decided is the breaking point. It could be, could have been one, since one is also uh, not, uh, not uh, also acceptable in this case, but uh, zero is just easier. You can, you can have uh, like n then immediately followed by question mark. And if it's zero, what should I return? Very easy, I should return zero because I don't want to add anything if it's zero, right? And that's where my recursion is going to stop. As you see, there is just this much code, okay? Imagine if my function would be called not summation but s, it would be like barely, barely any code uh, for solving this exercise in a recursive way. Compare that to the for loop, that was quite a bit of code. So this one is like even shorter than that array, functional array example, okay? And let's see if that works. Just trying my local tests. Yay, local tests have succeeded. And finally, trying the official tests. All good. So that's how you solve this very easy kata, but uh, we solved it in, a, in three ways. And hopefully you got some idea how, how, how you can like really modify your code depending on the task you're given, okay? Don't always, you know, rely on the for loops to do everything for you. Uh, know that there are some other ways to solve even, even this 
simple type of things you can solve it uh, like in more creative ways so thank you and see you in the next kata